In this video, I'd like to talk about shifting parabolas. And before we jump into this example problem, let's talk about parabolas in general. So we have what's called the parent function for parabolas, y equals x squared. And a parent function, remember, is essentially the most basic function that can be generated, in this case, for parabolas. And essentially every other type of parabola, like maybe this one here, or maybe one written in standard form, those parabolas essentially come from this simple one. You have to study the simple one first before you can understand the more complicated ones. So when we look at this parent function, and you could graph this using a table, just plugging in points, but it would go through at 0, 0, at 1, 1. If you plug in 2, it gives you a y value of 4. And the negatives would actually be symmetric. If you plug in negative 1, you get 1. If you plug in negative 2, you get 4. And so you get this curve that we call a parabola. I didn't draw it perfectly, but you can get a rough idea of what's happening here. And for all these problems, you can always verify these with a graphing calculator or by using the online graphing calculator that's free, Desmos. This is an excellent resource if you want to be able to see a picture of what an equation or function looks like. Now with this parent function, we want to ask ourselves, what happens if we were to maybe add 1 or subtract 1 or add or subtract any numbers? And I'll refer to this as the outside. The inside is when you're subtracting or adding within the parentheses. The outside is outside of the parentheses. So if we add or subtract on the outside, what's going to happen is that our parent function is going to either get shifted up or down. And again, if you want to verify this, you can make a table or you can just start plugging in some points. Like think about when you plug in one, you would get one squared, which is one plus one, which is two. So instead of being at one, one, this new function would be at one comma two. Likewise, if you plug in zero, zero squared plus one would be one. So our vertex would now go through at zero comma one. And when you plug in negative one, you would get one plus one, which again is at two. If you plug in two, 2 squared is 4, plus 1 would give you 5, so that would be up here. And so essentially what's happening is that the entire curve is being shifted up by 1. So we can say that this shifts up 1. And essentially it's taking this entire parent function, every point on that graph is now going to be a y value of 1 higher than what it used to be. Likewise, if we were to say, let's subtract two, so let me do that in a different color. Let's see, we have y equals x squared minus two. That would just shift every point down two units. So it'd be the exact same shape, just shifted down two units. And you could think about it when you're adding or subtracting on the outside that you're essentially just adding or subtracting to the y values of this parent function. So when you add one, we're just adding one to each of these y values, which shifts it up the entire curve one unit. So adding or subtracting on the outside shifts up and down. So this plus five right here, that would lead to shifting up five units. Now let's think about what happens when we add or subtract on the inside, since that's a little bit more complicated. So let me make some more room for that. Let's say over here. And I'll draw in a new coordinate plane. Now, again, we're going to compare it to our parent function. So let me draw that in, just our most basic parabola. This y equals x squared. We know it goes through at 1, 1, and at 2, 4. And I didn't draw it perfectly, but you can get a rough idea. And at minus 1, 1, and at minus 2, 4. Now, when we, let's say, look at a function, y equals x plus 1 squared. So now if we start plugging in values, like let's say you plug in minus 1, since that's going to be a key value here. If you plug in minus 1, that would make this 0. You'd have 0 squared, which is 0. So at minus 1, you would have essentially the vertex. So the vertex gets shifted over to the left one unit. But you can think about other points, like if you plug in x equals 0 you would get one squared, which is one. So that would be here. And let me actually recolor this so it's not part of the green curve. 
And if we plugged in x equals minus 2, you'd get minus 1 squared, which is 1. So that would be here. And if you plug in 1, you would get 2 squared, which is 4. So that would be up here. And so what you can see is that the entire parabola was shifted to the left one unit. And when you're adding or subtracting on the inside, it's usually the opposite of what you'd expect to happen. Since when we add it on the outside, when we added one, it shifted everything up one. But when we add one on the inside, it actually shifts left one. And likewise, if we had another curve, like let's say y equals x minus two squared. Now, when we plug in points here and think the key point is the x value that makes this zero, that would be positive two. Since if you plug that in, you get zero squared, which is zero. And that's the point of our vertex. And again, if you plot in points next to it, you'll get a point here and here, and you'll get your parabolic shape here. But what we can notice is that everything was shifted to the right two units. Just like for this green one, everything was shifted, you can say, left one unit. So adding or subtracting on the inside does the opposite direction that you would expect. When you add, you actually go to the left, and when you subtract, you go to the right. And the way that I think about this is I always just think which x value makes this expression zero. And that essentially tracks the x value of the vertex. Since ignoring adding or subtracting on the outside, that x value that makes this expression zero, that will give you a y value of zero. And since we're not adding or subtracting on the outside, we know the y value of the vertex would be zero. And so that would just tell you which x value is the x value of the vertex. And if you wanted to shift it up and down and left and right, then you essentially just combine the two ideas. Like with our example problem here, notice we are adding five on the outside, so that's gonna shift us up five, but we're also adding three on the inside. You wanna think which x value makes this zero, that would be minus three. And so we're gonna shift left in the negative direction, three units. So you can combine these two ideas and you essentially just think about them separately. And you might even notice that this is the vertex form for parabolas. Remember, actually, let me change colors there so it's a little brighter. But the vertex form for a parabola is just f of x is some number a, that could be any real number, x minus h squared plus k, where the vertex is the x value that makes this expression zero, which would be h in this case. And when you plug that in, this entire expression is zero and you end up with a y value of k. So the vertex would be at h comma k. But that's essentially what we have here with this parabola. The negative three comma five would be the vertex of this. So you could even write that down if you wanted. The vertex is at minus three comma five. But again, that vertex is essentially just telling us how we shifted this parent function, this most basic parabola. It was shifted up five and left three. So let's write that in. So up five, excuse me, up five units and to the left, three units. 